Thank you. Uh, the uh, remarks of my colleague from North Dakota have inspired me to stand and join him, uh, and, uh, and also the fact that we're uh, in a, uh, a room of, of great significance, and uh, silence reigns, and I, I hate just to fill it with words, but I think the topic we're talking about is extremely important. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate the good senator's support and effort in helping craft this legislation, this bipartisan legislation to improve our infrastructure in our country. Uh, I, I also uh, uh, salute the uh, leadership on both sides of the aisle for allowing a robust amendment process. There's no question but that there are many opportunities to improve the legislation as written. And the chance for our colleagues to offer adjustments and improvements is, uh, is part of our tradition and a good part of our tradition. I would concur that uh, we do need to upgrade our infrastructure. I think most Americans who've experienced our infrastructure would come to the same conclusion. Too often, our roads are in need of repair. Many times, we have communities that are not connected with high-speed travel opportunities from one part of the city to another. Our transit, in some cases, is uh, old, slow, and does not reach communities that need it. Our rail system, particularly on the Northeast, which is an important corridor for travel, is, uh, is way out of date. Uh, some people know you can drive between some cities where there are trains. You can drive faster than you can take the train. We have structurally deficient and dangerous bridges in some cases that need to be repaired. So I think there's general agreement on both sides of the aisle that we need to improve our infrastructure. It's known by people in this country and I think particularly brought home to us if you travel in other countries and you see what they're doing and then you compare where we are, you think, boy, we used to lead the world in these things and now we're not. And it's having an impact on our productivity as a nation because of the additional travel time necessary for us to get to and from work as, as well as other uh, uh, endeavors. Um, if that's going to happen, we have only two options right now and probably for the indefinite future. Right now, we have a circumstance where my party is in the minority, not by much. We're basically tied here in the Senate, although the tie is broken by the vice president. So the Democrats have a majority in the Senate, in the House, and of course with the White House. Given that circumstance, uh, it's possible for the Democrats to write a infrastructure bill all by themselves and simply pass it through a process known as reconciliation. That's one option. The other option is to work together on a bipartisan basis where we craft a better bill with the input of Republicans and Democrats. That's the option that's before us now. There is not a third alternative, which is Republicans only draft the bill. I'd love that alternative. It's just not available to us because we don't hold the House, the Senate, and the White House. So we have two options. Do we want our Democrat colleagues to draft a bill all by themselves? Or do we want to work together with Republicans and Democrats and fashion something that's, that's bipartisan? Now, I, I note that when you work on a bipartisan basis, there are some things the Democrats will want to include that we Republicans would rather not have there. And it's obvious that that's the case. I'm sure that's the case for the Democrats as well. They'll see things that we've included that they would just as soon not have there. And it's very easy for either side, or both sides rather, to point out the things in the bipartisan bill that they don't like and to attack it as not being fully in conformity with their views. But that's the nature of two parties working together. Now, some would say we could do better. Let's have another alternative, a different bipartisan approach. My answer is go at it, have at it. No one's keeping people from working together. If they want to come up with a better piece of legislation, boy, I'd be anxious to see what it is. But in order to get a, a bill passed, it must be acceptable to Democrats and Republicans. And that's unless, in my party, we're able to have all Republicans in the House, the Senate, and the, I mean, majority of the House and the Senate and the White House, which, which, uh, which we don't have at this stage. So again, the alternative is, if you can come up with a better bipartisan bill, do it. Two, amend it as you feel appropriate, and I think there are good amendments that are coming forward that I have supported and will support going forward. Uh, but the, uh, we must not let the uh, desire for perfection on the part of people like myself overcome the 
desire to have a good bill ultimately reached. I, I, uh, I think it's actually counterproductive for either side to take attack shots at the items in the bill they don't like. Uh, instead, bring forward amendments, see if you can improve the bill. If you can't do that, come up with a bill that has bipartisan support because that's the only alternative we face other than a bill drafted exclusively by Democrats. Uh, I, for one, think this bill is a good bill on balance. It'll be good for my state. I think it'll be good for every state. We'll get an upgrade, a badly needed upgrade, in the infrastructure of this country. Again, is it ideal? Perfect? Far from it. But it's a big step forward and one heck of a huge step of advantage relative to having one party alone write a piece of legislation. I think it's fair to say if Democrats alone write an infrastructure bill, my state of Utah won't be real happy by the time that's done. Thank you, Madam President.